Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today we have a collection of wonderful channelings from Quo regarding densities, dimensions, chakras, so many different topics. Quo, if you do not know, is a conglomeration of different social memory complexes from a variety of densities organized by the Confederation of Planets with the goal of helping enhance the spiritual nature and understanding of humans on Earth who have chosen this path. There's a lot of amazing information from it, and every time I read this material, it's speaking to some higher part of myself. I find it incredibly interesting, and so many people have written me about it, so we'll continue with these lessons. We begin with a question that was delivered on December 18th, 2005. In it, they say, I read Quo's response in Planet Like Worker magazine to the question about densities and vibrations. The Quo group spoke about seven densities in an octave. Others in the esoteric world speak of 12 dimensions. Can you explain the difference? Carla Channeling says, We are those known to you as the principle of Quo. Greetings in the love and the light of the one infinite creator. We come in the Creator's service to respond to the call of the circle of seeking this day. May we thank each of you for setting aside the time to create a circle of seeking and for calling for us to share information with you. It is our pleasure and our privilege so to do. As always, we would ask of you that you are very careful in your discrimination. Set aside any thought of ours that does not immediately apply to you. If you will take care to guard the gateway to your own thoughts, then we shall feel free to share our opinions without being concerned that we might infringe upon your free will. It is crucial to us that we share information without such infringement, so we thank each of you for this consideration. The query this day concerns the system of chakras that is used to structure the way that you think about your energy body. The question itself actually used the terms density and dimension. However, we believe we grasp that actual intent of the query is more in terms of the internal workings of the body system rather than the macrocosmic point of view in which densities of the creation are considered. We apologize if we misunderstand or misspeak because of this misunderstanding. However, we believe that the point of interest of the query has to do with looking at the system of the physical vehicle and its connections with the metaphysical universe in the form of the energy body that interpenetrates your physical body. And so we shall answer according to our understanding of this question as somewhat revised from the original statement. We should take note of the way the question was phrased in simply saying there is no true difference in the way that density and dimension are used, so that whether you are talking about the third dimension or the third density, it is, in general, understood by students of metaphysical work that one is speaking of a quantum or a certain kind of energy. The more appropriate of the two words for working with the concept of the octave of densities in creation is the word density rather than dimension. However, these two words are used interchangeably for the most part, not only by this instrument, but also by many others whose work this instrument has read. The densities, macrocosmically speaking, are reproduced faithfully within the energy of each and every entity that is in incarnation on earth at this time. Each of you has an energy body which contains elements that are true in pitch as the notes of a scale. The difference between conventional octaves within your Western modalities of physical notation creates a choice of various scales among the 12 notes that make up the diatronic scale, so-called within one octave of your musical instruments. In music, this 12-tone scale is a creation whereby in 12 half-tones the tones are created from octave to octave so that the twelfth tone is the same as the first. Carla then channeling sings the diatonic scale of twelve tones and then shows the difference and sings the octave with the eight tone scale. There is a minor scale and there are modal scales within the western system of musical notation, all of which have eight notes. It is to be noted in this regard, still speaking of music, that in the eastern or oriental ways of producing tone, there is no precise way of grading notes. Not only are quarter tones appreciated and differentiated, but also those who are gifted musically can produce by their voice or upon an instrument 
that is unfretted, an infinite number of gradations which have values less than a quarter tone. This is why Eastern music is fundamentally different in its effect upon the listener than Western music. Western music lives in modular boxes of differentiation that have neat and regular borders, whereas the Oriental approach offers an infinite landscape in which to create tone. If one gazes into the thinking and the culture of the West and the East, we would suggest that many inferences could be drawn by this difference. The tendency of the Western or Occidental orientation of mind is to choose the major scale or one of the eight-tone scales to listen to in music. It is not by chance that this choice is natural to the Occidental culture. The reason for use of an eight chakra system, which is the seven chakras and the octave chakra or the eighth being the same as the first, but only an octave higher, is that the Occidental culture is like a younger version of the older Oriental 12-tone system. There are fewer gradations, fewer differentiations, and a clearer, simpler, planar structure for looking at the self and structuring ways to interact with one's own energy system. On the other hand, the 12 chakra system is indicative of the further articulation of energies and the use of energy which is more typical of Asian, Eastern, or Oriental thought. The 8 chakra system has been discussed previously and so we will very briefly review that system. The red ray chakra is concerned mostly with survival and sexuality. The orange ray chakra located in the lower belly is associated with issues of personal relationship. The yellow ray chakra or the solar plexus energy center is associated with the energies of interacting with groups. The green ray or heart chakra is associated with opening the heart and discovering one's own sacred nature. The throat chakra or blue ray energy center is connected with communication. The indigo ray center at the brow is associated with the disciplines of the personality and work in consciousness. And the violet ray chakra, which is the crown chakra, is associated with that readout of momentary reality that is expressing at any given moment and is a system readout for the entire energy body. That is what we would call the occidental or western chakra structure. The subtleties of the 12 chakra system can be very helpful to students of metaphysics. It begins the same way as does the western system, the first chakra being connected with issues of sexuality and survival. The second chakra, however, is divided in the eastern system into two energy centers, one of which deals strictly with the self relating to the self. The second of these so-called orange race centers deals with the self in relation to other selves. The solar plexus chakra remains unified in the eastern system, However, after the solar plexus is left, and before one reaches what in the western system is the heart chakra, there is a chakra which this instrument has often spoke of as the outer court of the heart. It is helpful to realize that moving into the heart is not an unalloyed and simple joy. It is a process that in its inception can create a great deal of difficulty for the student and the seeker. The difficulty of moving into the heart is that one must bring all of the self into the heart in order for that space to become truly sacred. Most seekers are quite astonished when they first enter their own hearts to discover that there is a real perceived problem with meeting one's shadow side. After all the work of realizing that we are spiritual beings has been done, after clearing issues of personality, sexuality, survival, personal relationships, and all of the work that each entity is doing with groups, an entity that is seeking feels balanced and eager to enter that spacious holiness of the open heart. However, the first thing that most entities find upon entering the space is that just as in the story within your New Testament of the entity known as Jesus Christ walking into the temple and seeing all the sellers of the doves and so forth, which entities could buy for sacrifice, entities walking into their own hearts find there are sellers of doves they're hawking busily away with their own agendas. Little do most seekers know just how much of their personalities have been subverted and taken over by cultural expectations, parental teaching, and other sources of information which create assumptions and theories of how things are that simply do not meet the standards of purity that the particular space of the open heart requires in order for the seeker to penetrate from the outer courtyard to the inner sanctum. This is related to that concept or idea of that which is called psychic greeting or psychic attack. The outer courtyard of the heart is that place where those portions of your personality shell that have been allowed to express themselves without your being aware of their presence make their presence known. In many cases, 
entities will experience these energies as attacks. Perhaps they will feel there is an entity that is attacking them from the outside, with some sort of overshadowing or attacking going on. Others have more sensitivity in discerning the source of such seeming attack and can pinpoint the energy as being within the system of the self. Whether these attacking energies are seen as part of the self or as coming from outside the self, fundamentally speaking, we may say that in our opinion, they are part of the self in that all things are one and you, as individual selves, are actually tuning into that space and time that is articulated by the parameters of one particular kind of energy. Therefore, that which seems very personal and very threatening in many cases is in actuality not a threat, but simply that portion of self which has gone unnoticed and therefore undeveloped. There is great virtue in being willing to spend time in that outer courtyard of the open heart, and to see that as a separate chakra or energy center, to spend time with those sellers of doves for sacrifice to discover why your culture felt that sacrifice was necessary and why certain elements or essences within your personality have been chosen to be sacrificed. We speak in extremely non-literal terms here and are speaking of all those energies of self that have escaped your attention up until now. Perhaps they did not so much escape your attention as that you felt they were unworthy of attention. There are energies such as shame, guilt, jealousy, and anger that are systematically and ritually downplayed and discouraged in terms of outer expression within your culture. Nevertheless, these two need to be taken up, brought up into the light of attention and given respect. These two are ways that you feel these two are worthy to be examined inspected, analyzed, and accompanied in whatever amount of time it takes for you to begin to be able to see their virtue and their value. Many seemingly rough and negative aspects of character and personality are precisely those energies that create a true depth to understanding any genuine stability and steadiness of attention. The quality of anger, for instance, once translated into unquenchable stubbornness in dedication to service can become the powerhouse that it was intended to be. But this cannot occur until the virtue of anger is seen straight on for its own self and its own essence. The outer sanctum of the heart chakra is therefore a really powerful and very hurly-burly sort of energy, and to move from the outer courtyard to the inner sanctum of the heart becomes much more clear and focused movement when that outer heart is given its own private place. Another difference between what we would call the western and eastern chakra system is that immediately after the heart chakra and before the throat or blue ray chakra of open communication there's an added energy center in the eastern system to explicate why this becomes very helpful it is well to point out that the green ray or heart chakra is the first energy center in which the possibility of a true energy exchange exists the lower chakras having to do with the self, its survival issues, its sexuality, its relationships with the self and other selves personally, and its relationship with groups are all energies that may seem to be in need of balancing and clearing so that they are neither underactivated nor overactivated. But one cannot share energy between red ray and red ray or orange ray or yellow ray. One may impress those energies upon another self and because of the strength of your energy system, it is possible for energy to be impressed from you to another person or for another person to impress you with their energy. It is, however, an overlay. It is time-bound in its effect and will wear off naturally. Many of your faith healers, so-called, are those who are healing either from the orange or yellow ray chakra and they are impressing their understanding and their environment upon another. Those who are able to accept those impressions are able to experience quite a bit of release from the various ailments for a certain time period. However, in every case, where it is at the level below the heart, those energies will not persevere and will fade away naturally. Only when one moves into the open heart can one begin to share energy, to exchange energy with another, to give love and to receive love. The great blessing of opening the heart and keeping it open is that working from the open heart all of the functions of the lower energy centers are recreated as sacred. The chakras above the level of the heart are also energy centers from which energy exchanges can be made. The reason that this information is helpful in discussing the chakras that come after the heart chakra in the eastern system 
is that there is additional energy centers which capture a structure that is missing completely from the Western system. There is subtlety here that can only be appreciated by those who have done quite a bit of work in consciousness. It involves what this instrument has termed a 90 degree phase shift. These are not words that have an objective referent for this instrument, but they represent a phrase she has heard many, many times in speaking with one known as Don Elkins, who is largely working from concepts created by the one known as George Williamson. The key concept of this added chakra is that in this turning after the heart chakra, the turn includes the whole of the unseen realms of the metaphysical of the time-space universe. It is an energy center that is focused upon right relationship with the extended family that one has in the unseen realms. The greatest part of this family for seekers is that portion that is connected with guidance. Each entity has a guidance system and access to this guidance system is extremely helpful. If one focuses upon this particular energy center, one can do very precise work in opening oneself to the guidance that lies within. The other differences between Eastern and Western chakra systems has to do with subtleties within work in consciousness in communication, which is the Blu-ray energy center. There is a division in the Eastern system between the communication of self with self and the communication of self with other selves. Further, there is a third division which deals with the communication of the self with the extended family of guides, presences, essences, and entities that are connected with the self. We say this realizing that the subtleties are such that we cannot say to you in general what those various essences are. Each individual creates a web of family throughout not only the incarnation which you are enjoying at this time, but also those entities with whom you have worked between incarnations. Those entities that you have worked with in past incarnations and the known planetary non-local energies which have been drawn to you as a local entity within incarnation because of your work within incarnation and work you have done between incarnations. Each of you within this circle and each to whom we speak in the extended family of internet and listener and readership that is constantly growing contains a large loving extended family that awaits your focus and your request for help in order to become more active within your life. It is important to remember therefore to request help from your guidance system. The other added chakra in this Eastern system is very difficult for us to express to you. Once the readout of violet ray has been cleared, there is an additional chakra in the Eastern system, which is dedicated to that point where the energy of self spirals from the now into the possibilities of the future. It is the point which this instrument would call the gateway to intelligent infinity. We are aware that this information by itself is sterile and barren. We speak here of structures. It is you who draws the infinite love and light of the one creator up into that structure up into that energy body it is you by prayer meditation and other forms of requesting guidance insight and vision who draw from the energies of the one infinite creator teaching entities such as we and many many other types of entities that do not speak at all but who stream from the point of entry at the gateway of intelligent infinity down into the energy system that determines what kind of life your energy system has. Picture with us, if you will, the creature that you are. You are receiving this information along your spine in the physical lines of a system of energy, reception, and usage. It is fed infinitely in an unending supply by the love and the light of the one creator. That light is literally sent down into the heart of the earth. Your mother who then pours it from the center of the earth, or you might even say the womb of the earth, up through the earth, into the soles of your feet, into your body system, so that it is constantly streaming into your energy system at the red ray level, and rising as it will up and out through the top of your head to the gateway of intelligent infinity. Meanwhile, according to your desire and will and your requests, guidance and teaching is pulled into your energy system from the top through the violet ray then the indigo ray and so forth until it reaches the blue ray or the green ray depending upon whether you are using those energies in communication or whether you are using them in healing basically realize that the point at which those two energies meet is the point at which your kundalini is now focused if you wish to raise your kundalini you have two things to work on first you have the clearing of the lower energies so that you get full creative energy up through the soles of your feet and into your energy body 
Secondly, you are attempting to focus your will, discipline your personality, and call forth the most helpful energies that you can to teach and guide you as you seek the truth. Question, earlier you mentioned the rise of Kundalini. Could you clarify that? We are those of Quo, my brother, and are aware of your query. That which is rising or not is the point of contact between the natural energies available to all within and the energy of the creative principle called to the self by individual work. That point of contact begins, roughly speaking, within that point where the outer courtyard of the heart yields to the inner sanctum. The Kundalini cannot be pulled lower than that as information of the creative principle cannot be understood by any energies lower than that of the heart. However, the point of the Kundalini rising in terms of entity's desire to progress spiritually is that as one begins to be able to pull the energy of that open heart up into work in consciousness, each place to which it is raised opens up vistas of opportunity for various types of work in consciousness. Not simply moving upwards as one aiming directly for the Creator, but in terms of working at any level. For instance, in open communication, there is the opportunity to spread out one's discoveries and one's services by creating more and more layers of understanding or awareness of subtle energies involved in the subdensity, shall we say, of open communication. Once the Kundalini has been pulled from the heart up into the throat, then more articulated work can be done in communication. And this is also true as the Kundalini continues to be pulled upwards by the seeking and careful development and discipline of the personality. Question, what aspect of the self is doing the pulling? Quo says, the aspect that pulls the energy forward is desire, or as it's sometimes called, will. In a session in 1989, they ask, could you speak a little bit about the different densities? I would particularly like to know about your density, the fourth density. I believe that's correct. What differentiates you from us and where you are bound? I am Hatan, and I'm aware of your query, my brother. The densities of this octave of creation are composed of light. This is that which is more or less dense within each succeeding density or dimension. The octave of creation itself may be seen as similar to the octave of notes in your western scales of music, beginning with that which is analogous to do, ending with the same note at a higher octave. Thus, that which is the beginning in this octave, the first density, has a certain vibration of the photon of light that vibrates at a certain frequency and with certain angles of rotation that provide a discrete environment in which simple awareness may exist. That awareness is what you would see as that of earth, wind, fire, and water. After a certain portion of time, as you know it, has unrolled its scroll of beingness, there is the increased vibration of rotation and angle of rotation of the photon that allows a quantum leap, shall we say, that is significantly altered or expanded and which provides for an enhanced experience of awareness, that which seeks the light and that which moves and that which is identified by your second density of plants, and that which you call animals. These entities then have their experience during which they attempt to gather about themselves an individualization of consciousness and move from that which is the group, whether it be the herd, the flock, the school. When this has been accomplished, the cycle of beingness, there is again the great quantum leap in possibility and potential in consciousness until that which is the third density of creation, that which you inhabit, which comes into being by the increased rotation of vibration of the photon of light and the angles of rotation that again allow the greater experience of consciousness as each portion of consciousness of the one creator moves from that complete unity with the creator into the individualization that allows the gathering of experience that will allow the creator to know itself in each of its portions and will allow each of its portions to know the creator through this experience. When consciousness within your third density has been individualized to the point that the choice can be made in either the positive or the negative sense, that is to be of service to others, to give of that energy of the Creator to others, or to absorb that energy of the Creator in the negative or magnetic sense. When either of these two choices have been made as to how the further seeking of the Creator shall be experienced, then it is that another leap, shall we say, in consciousness is possible. This is the movement of consciousness into that density of love and understanding, which it is our honor and privilege to inhabit. Within this fourth density of creation, the form of the body that has been chosen in the second density experience of plants, of animal to be invested, then is again used as it was in the third density. 
but is used in what you might see of a somewhat different form, that is, what your peoples frequently call the astral body, that body which is lighter in your material gravity, shall we say, but is more densely packed with light. This body then is far more responsive to thought and may move far more freely in time and in space than your bodies move. Communication within our density of creation is most frequently in the form of what you call telepathy, but in an expanded form of telepathy in which complete concepts or gestalts or pictures or information may be transmitted instantaneously. There's no ability or desire to hide any thought at this level of seeking the one creator. We who have the honor of inhabiting this density of creation have found it helpful to join together with those of our kind, such as your planetary population might at some point in its future choose to join in its seeking in serving the one infinite creator, each offering to the group or social memory complex that which it has learned in its journey of seeking, so that the entire complex of entities has at its disposal a great wealth of information each experience of each entity becoming available then for use in decision making and in the attempt to continue the evolutionary process in service to the one creator and each of its manifestations. When we have been successful in turning our beings entirely to the service of the one creator, then that particle of consciousness that moves within each cell of our being as light shall again be offered the opportunity to leap forward to an expanded potential for awareness. This potential within the fifth density of light is that which offers the opportunity to gain that which you might call wisdom, so that the great compassion that is gained within our illusion of the fourth density might find a means of being focused in a manner which is most helpful, without interfering over much within the evolution of any other entity that we seek to serve. Thus the wisdom density, the fifth density of light, is that which seeks to create a form through which service might be offered in both a wise and a loving manner. When this lesson has been learned, there is again the opportunity to experience the leap in consciousness and the potential for greater perfection as the point of view is a widened to take in a greater portion of the creator and the creation and to see it as the self. The density numbering six is that density in which the unity of the creator is again approached as love and wisdom are balanced each with the other, and that which might be called a spiritual power is gained, the power to be of service without the infringement upon the free will of another. The sixth density experience of light and of the creation is one in which those who have traveled both the positive or radiant and negative or absorbent paths are again joined, so that seeking after this point within the sixth density continues apace without the great polarization in consciousness that begins within your third density experience and continues through the fourth, fifth, and into the mid-sixth density. When the lessons of unity have been completed, then it is that entities move into the seventh density, that gateway of density of foreverness, that allows the movement towards the complete reunification with the one creator, which is completed within the eighth density, as you would call it, thus completing the great cycle of experience with all experiences gained by each entity offered to the Creator as means by which the Creator has been able to know itself, offered as that which shall become the seeds for the next great octave of experience. The eighth density is the complete reunification with the One Creator and is seen by your physicists and astronomers as that which is called the Black Hole. For within this level of being, all experience, all light, all matter, all of creation is indrawn into the one creator so that the fruits of the great journey may be gathered and become the foundation for the further experience and expression of the one creator question i'm trying to clarify as to your density the fourth density particularly from what i understand you do have the physical form and you also have said that you continue to have polarization perhaps even greater polarization than we have here does this mean you have dissension does this mean that you have problems what are the problems that you have in this density? What are the things that make you happy? To me, those are very basic. And what are the things that make you fulfilled in your existence between yourselves, not in dealing with us? I am Hatan and I'm aware of your query, my brother. We must first preface our response by suggesting that the experience of each succeeding density beyond your own is difficult enough to describe in words. That at some point, it becomes impossible within the confining boundaries of words 
to describe that which is quite beyond description. However, we shall attempt to speak to your query. We indeed inhabit physical vehicles, which as we mentioned previously, are those which were derived from the second density creatures within your own illusion. The ape form is that form which was chosen by the Logos to invest with the potential for completing the evolutionary process through the octave of densities. This form is chosen in approximately 5% of the planetary influences within this galaxy of which we are aware. There are other forms chosen in other planetary influences. This form is maintained through the fourth density illusion and into the fifth density illusion, at which point the mastery over one's own being proceeds to the point that it is possible within the fifth density illusion to create whatever form is most helpful at the moment as the service that has been requested is offered. That which enriches our being and brings the greatest joy to our hearts is our ability to offer service to other portions of the creation which seek or ask for that which is ours to offer. We have within our social memory complex of entities a great variety of experiences upon which we may draw to decide how best to offer our services. There is not dissension as you know it amongst our beings, and that we do not seek to gain advantage over others for our own gain. But there is frequently difference of opinion as to how best to offer our service to others. For in offering service, one must be most careful that the free will of those whom one wishes to serve is not abridged, which is to say that we do not provide specific directions as to how an entity should move in its daily round of activity and how specific choices in the life pattern should be made. Rather, we seek to offer the principles of the evolutionary process, which we have found helpful in our experience, that those whom we wish to serve may interpret in their own way and in their own life patterns. In another session in 2019, Gary asks, I have a question about the red ray. Is there the possibility of blocking its flow in any way, say by fear of, or rather, a threat to survival? I am Quo and I'm aware of your query, my brother. Normally speaking, the red ray is a ray which does not have a variable nature of expression. That is to say, it is normally fixed in its quality of beingness, that being the survival of the entity and the reproduction of entities. However, it is indeed quite possible to block the red ray in either of these expressions of its basic nature. The blockage is most usually accomplished by the entity in its conscious nature in which there would be seen a threat to the well-being of the physical or mental complexes of the entity. This fear consciousness then can indeed render the red ray blocked in a fashion which prohibits further movement of the prana or the love and light of the one creator through its energy center. Question, what about in the instance of an entity who commits suicide, have they blocked their red ray energy center? I am quo and I'm aware of your query, my brother. Such an entity would be feeling a kind of fear of being alive, of fearing the consequences of its experience that has moved in a most disturbing fashion through the entity for some period of what you call time. Thus, the entity that would be, shall we say, driven by its own fears of failure or fear of not being able to continue to process the growing catalyst in its life pattern would be blocking all energy centers at once. For this type of experience is one which includes the very nature of the spiritual being of this entity. Thus, the red ray would be blocked firstly, then the others in turn. Question in the raw contact. The questioner is asking about the balancing of the energy centers and Ra begins. Ra moves through the energy centers starting with the red ray and they say the first balancing is of the Malkuth or Earth vibratory energy complex called the red ray complex. An understanding and acceptance of this energy is fundamental. Is there any way to elaborate on what Ra means by an understanding and acceptance of this energy is fundamental? I am Quo and I am aware of your query my brother. The Malkuth is the earth realm in which the spiritual energies are fed into the mind-body-spirit complex, first through the red ray in order that this elemental body which is without form may be energized in a manner which allows it to have beingness within the earth realms. The potentiated nature of the red ray at that time then becomes activated so it becomes what you may call the foundation upon which the rest of the energy center activities may be based. It is that which is fundamental to all other actions and intelligence that will emanate from each succeeding energy center. Question: Could you expound on the right use and purpose of red ray attraction between entities for positive polarization? I am Quo and am aware of your query, my brother. The red ray activation is that which occurs between two entities 
or sexually polarized in a manner which is, shall we say, available for interaction or interplay. This means that the attraction is that which finds a polar opposite, whether the entity be biologically male or biologically female. The physical attraction is that which is congruent with each entity's individual and unique natures. This operates without conscious control. This operates more accurately as an unconscious reflection of the nature of each entity's basic quality of sexual polarity. Thus, there is a result of this attraction, a kind of fellowship of a basic nature that becomes the foundation of an addition to this basic quality, as the interaction between the two entities commences and continues. Therefore, each entity is offered the opportunity to be of service to the other in one manner or another, as it begins with the sexual attraction being added unto the intense red and orange ray quality of the individual beingness. Moving further along the yellow ray that places each entity within the group situation of the mated pair ideally. However, this is always due and processed by individual free will, thus the basic pattern of energizing and promoting the relationship value of the two entities is that which is propelling function of the red ray excitation. Question. So it's my understanding, Quo, that essentially we are creating the path to the fourth dimension in the way of fertilization now. I guess just in the way of perception, on what you know for me in the way of love and light. I carry through the day in the way I live. I sometimes see things as playing out as like a movie outside of myself. So I'm asking, with what you're saying in the way of, of us getting together as collectives and meditating for the world, is that we're carrying them closer to the violet light, which to me is part of us, most of us. Is it something that to me, that we're called here together today to know each other for something of that nature? to work towards a higher understanding, a vibration? How can we do that together? Quo says, Indeed, each entity within this circle of seeking, as well as so many others, many others of like mind, body, and spirit, has within it the capacity to contact that quality of love and light within each being, which is the one infinite creator, and to send forth that love and light to the planetary population in a fashion which may inspire more seeking of the truth, as you may call it, by each entity. The seeking of this truth is the seeking of that which is the unity of all creation expressed through the open heart that feels unconditional love for all of the creation. Each entity in each iota of the creation being seen as the other self, being seen as the creator, being seen as the perfection of all creation within the third density illusion. Thus each moment, each day, each diurnal period that you experience this love and light and send it forth to the planetary whole is an opportunity to expand upon the possibilities of the harvest being completed in the positively and negatively oriented senses, so that this planet may offer the fruit of its beingness to the one creator at the level of the fourth density of love and understanding. Question. Quo, it is our understanding that each new generation that is born on earth will express abilities and understanding that exceeds the boundaries of consensus reality and progressively lead us toward fourth density. When the new generation is at the stage of childhood, how do we adults help to inspire these children and help them to identify and develop their gifts? I am quo and am aware of your query, my brother. First of all, we would suggest that each person see each new child, not just as a child of a mother and a father of third density, but as a child of the one infinite creator. For in truth, that is the nature of each child and each entity upon this planet. Seeing each child as the creator, look then to how the creator within all may be apprehended and taught that this child as a means of daily inspiration and recognition of the creator that exists in all. Find a manner in which you may share your love of the one creator with this child upon a regular basis. Just as you learn arithmetic and reading in your schooling system, teach them the oneness of all creation. Teach them the unconditional love of all creation. Teach them the light of the truth of all creation. Teach them the interrelatedness of all entities within the one creation, and most especially at this time upon the planet you call Earth. Make this the foundation of every child's education, and then each child shall be rich in the knowledge of that which is. For we are all one. We are one with each child. We are one with each other. We are one with the father. We are one with the mother. We are one with the planet. We are one. Question. The final query is, how can visualization help create things in my life, and do you have any recommendations to improve this activity? We are the principle of Quo and are aware of your query. This question on visualization is a delicate one, my brother, in that it is possible to visualize and desire many things. 
And it is a legitimate thing to desire anything whatsoever and to visualize it in order to bring it into your experience. And it shall work if you wish to use the power of visualization in this way. You have to identify precisely that which you wish and then spend time gazing lovingly at that object of desire. However, it is possible to desire the things of earth, which can be spoken of and listed in number. It is also possible to desire those things which are of the heaven world, shall we say, such as desiring to do the will of the one infinite creator, desiring to see the love in each moment, desiring to see the creator in the eyes of all whom you meet, and desiring to dedicate your life to service in the love and the light of the one creator. The desiring of these things and the visualization of them is likewise powerful, yet it attracts to you not this or that, rather it attracts to you that resonance within you which you may associate with the one infinite creator, my brother. We would recommend that you be careful and cautious in visualizing anything that is an object. Rather, we would encourage you to create visualizations concerning your highest and deepest desires to serve, asking simply that you be an instrument that the Creator may play according to its will, so that you may be truly inspired and a creature who vibrates with love and the light of the one infinite Creator. If you desire and visualize this, then that which you need for learning and for your service shall come to you without reaching, without worry or concern. And you shall find that your life develops in a way that is far more rewarding, and as this instrument would say, awesome, than any visualization which you may choose. We would, however, say that there are visualizations for the good of humankind, such as peace on earth, peace in the hearts of humankind, love in the hearts of humankind, and such concerns as this that are the proper concern of those who would do work in consciousness. These visualization on behalf of the tribe of humankind are blessed indeed. We find that this instrument and this group's energies begin to wane, and so at this time reluctantly we admit we shall take our leave of this instrument and of this group, leaving each in the love and the light of the one infinite creator. We are known to you as the principle of Quo, Adonai, Adonai, Vasu. This concludes Dimensions and Densities by Quo. There's a lot more information I could have read from here. It's so amazing, the broad swath of information that Quo covers and answering pretty much every question. They even asked questions about chapped lips in some of these channeling sessions. They were definitely not afraid to ask any question. In particular, this is a really good summary of the 12 chakra system and of the densities that we're going through and the differences in fourth density. Uh, there's a little bit of new nuggets of information that we get we may not have had in the past, the nature of the body of the fourth density. And so I'm sure that I'll go back and listen to myself when I do this, as I always do, and I'll learn some things from Quo's channeling. I'd love to know what stuck out for you if you learned something new from this. And uh, we will continue to explore the many different teachings of Quo. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. Dot com. And welcome to the Reality Revolution.